Shalom. Brother Tasa Bashar, back with the video, Chima Sal and Sit Downs. And start off with giving all praise and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders, the apostles of GMS for teaching us this truth. Shall want to all the sincere Akiyam pushing his word of sincerity and truth. So, like I already said in the video, um, from uh, Israelites to Moors to Berbers, is that I was gonna make a rebuke video on the, on the Islam, man. Eh? On the Islam, which is a is a pagan pagan uh, religion, man. Eh? Goes back to moon worship. So. Let me start off with the scripture. It's Exodus chapter 23, verse 13. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm going to start off with that, because hey, a lot of jakes go into this Islam bullshit, man, and this Islam religion. But the scripture says, our scriptures, our law says we shouldn't make mention of other gods, man. But you know, Jake follows everything, man. Buddha, Islam, Krishna, you know, Christianity. Which Christianity is just, it's just, it's just the Bible, man. But they change it also into paganism, man. So yeah, man, today is going to be that, that day, man. Islam rebuke. Straight up. So, what I just read was Exodus. It's about the law. So, for who was the law made, man? For who was the law made? Let me grab the scripture. This is Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. His statutes, his statutes and his commandments unto Israel, he had not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye how by Shemiah Shai. Yeah, man, the law, statutes, and commandments is given to the children of Israel, man, unto Jacob, who is the son of Isaac. You know? So, so the law, the, 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 the books of the law is only for the children of Israel. Going into uh, the forefather of, of these Arabs, man. That's Ishmael, man. Because this is where they get their, their boldness from, their, their pride. Because the scriptures talk about, uh, about Ishmael, man. So I'm going to read where they get their boldness from. This is Genesis chapter 17, starting with 18. And Abram said unto the Most High, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And the Most High said, Sarah thy wife shall bear, uh, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with the seed after him. So here he sees it start the most high is like hey, look upon your son Isaac, man. Don't look upon your son Ishmael. But then because the covenant, which is circumcision, and after that the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments, is given unto the seed of uh, Isaac and also unto Isaac, you know, the son of Abraham. Verse 20, and as it and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Because Abraham was asking for Ishmael what was going to happen with him. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year so you know it says ishmael i have heard thee for ishmael i have heard thee and the most i has blessed ishmael the forefather of the arabs but the covenant is made with with isaac man so the most i will continue to work with the, with the seed of isaac not with the seed of uh, ishmael 
not with the seed of these Arabs, man. You know? That's why also his mother was kicked out of the house, man. Hagar. Abraham kicked him out, uh, kicked her out of the house, man. And, and his wife Sarah beat her up, man. You know? So, um, and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. You know, Ishmael is multiplied, man. No question about that. You know? And princes, a lot of princes came out of Ishmael, man. Hey, they are fucking rich over there, man. That's their blessing, man. All the oil, the land that they have. Hey, those those people over there drive drive around in, in, in expensive cars and stuff, leaving them in the desert to waste, you know? That's their blessing, man. But their blessing has nothing to do with the scriptures and the spiritual things. You know? So they wanna they wanna um point out that they are blessed because they are the seed of uh, Ishmael. Well this supposed to be in their book too because the Quran is based on the first five books of the Bible, which is the Torah. So this is supposed to be in their book too. But I'm not surprised that they took it out, you know. This is um, Genesis chapter 22, starting with verse 1. And it shall come to pass after these things that the Most High did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moria, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. So the Most High commands Abraham to, to, um, uh, to pick up his only begotten son. So Ishmael was out of the picture, man. Now the Most High speaks unto Abraham, which you, you Ishmaelites call Ibrahim, and says, pick up thy only begotten son. So for the Most High, Ishmael was out of the picture, man. You know? Ishmael was out of the picture. Yeah, he got his blessing, but uh, he, he was going to continue with the seed of Isaac, man. You know, the line of Isaac. So that cut she Ishmaelites are with, man. You know, being proud that you come from the line of Ishmael and that you're blessed. Man, your blessing is nothing compared to the blessing that comes to the seed of Jacob, man. The line of uh, the line of Isaac. You know, and 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 your 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 Quran speaks about it, man. Your Quran speaks about it because if it's based of the Bible, you have to look very good and clear. The, the, is, the Quran is going to speak about it, that the children of Israel are blessed above all the nations. So I've got the scripture right here, man. This is uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 122. O children of Israel, call to mind my favor, which I bestow on you, that I made you excel the nations. So your own Quran says that the children of Israel is made to excel the nations, man, and that they are favored above all nations. So, you know, since, since the Quran is based, based off the Bible, you can, you know, X these things out, man. And the children of Israel aren't those, those Khazars, those, those Gadarets in the land of Israel right now, man. The real children of Israel are the Negroes, Latinos, and Indianos. The chosen people of the Most High Yahweh. You know, so this is this is what your own Quran says, man. You know, I'm I, I am on uh, on Quran.com. You know, since I don't have the Quran in in my house, man, I don't even want it. But you know, for the edification, let me read it again. This is Surah, chapter two, verse one hundred and twenty-two. O children of Israel, call to mind my favor which I bestowed on you and that I made you excel the nations, man. That's the, that's the, um, 
inheritance of Israel, man, that they, they, they shall excel the nations. And your own Quran speaks about it, man. Now I must show you a, a, an identical scripture, which is in the Bible, man, which shows you, this comes straight out of the Bible, man. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Back to the Quran, O children of Israel, call to mind my favor which I bestow on you, that I made you excel the nations. Basically the same thing, man. You know? So so you people can't come around that, man. Your own Quran says that the people of Israel are blessed above all nations of the earth. You know? And Muhammad knew that too. That fake prophet Muhammad, which is set up by the by the Roman Catholic Church. You know, but we go into that man. So how came the Islam to existence and why? You know? Starting off with since um, 70 AD, a, a big number of Israelites fled out of uh, out of the land, man. So that made that defiled the land because what? All kinds of people uh, came into it, man. You know the Arabs, the Hamites, you know. But uh, uh, a lot of Arabs were in the land, but there was still Jake, Jews, you know. The the Judites were still in the land, but they they were being filthy, man. You know, then the Byzantine Empire was set up, you know, pagan Rome, which they called Holy Rome. And they was fighting over the land, man. There were Arabs in the land. They were, you know, Jews, real Jews from the tribe of Judah, you know, from uh, Judah, Benjamin and Levi was still in the land. And then you had that Holy, Holy Rome, you know, which they called Holy Rome, which was pagan Rome. You know the Byzantine Empire trying to come back in that land, man. So they came up with an idea to have power over those Arabs, man. You know, to to take control over that land and to basically push those Arabs out of the land too. You know. So there came the Council of Nicaea, and by this council was set up um, a plan. To, to get rid of those Arabs, man, and to and to take that land back, you know, under the name of the the holy the the Roman Catholic Church, to possess the land again, which were Jakes, man. They wasn't no so-called white people, man. They wasn't no cracker devils, man. Those were Jakes, man. And the Byzantine Empire came to existence by uh, uh, Constantine the Great, which was. A which which was a Jake man. He was a Jake, an Israelite, from the seed of Jacob. So in that time, even even though the Israelites were going off, Arabs were low be, below us, man. You know. So with that council, uh, they this they they made an idea to push this this Arab prophet, man, which was who. You, this that that guy Muhammad man. So I got this uh, this book here. It's Babylon to Timbuktu, you know, and it speaks about um, the birth of Islam, man. Which is a joke. It's really a joke, man. You know. Um, so this is Babylon to Timbuktu, chapter four, um, page forty-five. After Muhammad became a camel driver, he traveled to remote and intrude, uh, intruding lands. He led his caravans to Persia. So he was a camel driver, man. This guy was, wasn't was rich. He didn't have a lot of money, you know? He was basically just a normal, he was basically a taxi driver, man. He led his caravan to Persia, Syria, and Egypt, transacting business with merchants of every kind. And his business trips, he met Jews, Christians, and members of other sects. He interrogated them concerning the tents of the religions. You know, so he was asking questions about what it is, but he wasn't really into it, you know. He just met the people that were, he just met 
the, the, the Israelites basically, man, you know, he interrogated them concerning the ten uh, the tenets of their religion. He frequent he frequented the environment of the Jews and their rabbis mostly because they were merchants and only uh, present ethnic group because he could not read or write so Muhammad couldn't read nor write man Muhammad couldn't read nor write and that's where the Quran is based off man a guy that couldn't read nor write man you gotta be a fool to, to follow such such belief man for real his ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to him. Muhammad learned and extracted much from the Jew religion. It says Jewish, but no such thing as Jewish, man. Those fake Jews over there, they are Jewish. Because the word ish is something like, not really. If something is reddish, reddish, it's not red. It looks like it's red, but it isn't, you know? So they are fake, man. This is talking about the, the, the Judites, man. The, the kingdom of Judah. Extracted much from the Jew, Jewish religion and compounded it with his new religion, Islam. This wasn't the time. So this is, this is wrong, man. This wasn't, this last part is wrong because this wasn't the time that he was thinking about making Islam, man. You know, it came after when, uh, Khadija came and Khadija was a uh, part of the Roman Catholic Church man so she was set up man by the Council of Nicaea man she was set up she was a merchant she was basically a businesswoman man so when she saw this guy you know that camel driver you know she she hired him man she hired him boom boom talked with him helped him get fame she helped him get fame and to push that islam religion man to push that 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 crap to to um get rid of those arabs man and get and take the land basically but what happened as soon as as she, as she helped him he got famous you know and he did he basically did his own thing man you know so um yeah, so he was working for this woman, Khadijah, which was a, a, a Hebrew Israelite, man. Khadijah was a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Jacob, man. So, by the supervision, you know, Khadijah pushed him in that, you know, to made him to push that Islam, man. Under the supervision of the Roman Catholic Church, of course. And at the age of 25, he married with her, man. Mohammed was married with her and she was of the age of 40, man. So, I, I don't know guys of the age of 25 who want to marry a 40 year old woman, man. But since she was an Israelite, she must have been beautiful, man. You know? Israelites, and that's why Israelites, Israelite women, they still look nice at the, at the, you know, old age. So he married her. And she she gave him fame and then he started join, uh, uh, going through the, the countries to push that Islam man that was his task you know so he started pushing that, that Islam man um, so yeah Islam based on the on the books the first five books of the Bible which is the Torah and like I already read, he was talking with those Judites, man. Could have been Benjamites, could have been Levites, but they fall under the under the uh, name Jew, you know, because they they were under the, the the kingdom of Judah in those times. But in that time, you know, when that Islam was pushed, they was just called Jews, man, you know. So. Um, this is Babylon to Tambukdu again. Um, yeah, starting at page 47 on top. Incidentally, by this time, the Hebrew Old Testament has been translated into Arabic. 
Because, hey, let me, let me set this straight, man. The Hebrew language was, be, was before the Arab language, man. Because these Muslims want to battle and say, no, no, it's a, they are neighboring uh, languages. They were set up uh, at the same time. That's some bullshit, man. You, you, you people want to say you come from Ishmael, that, that, that Ishmael is the son of uh, Abraham for you, Ibrahim. So what was, uh, what was Abraham, man? He was a Hebrew. What was Ishmael? He was a Hebrew. He was a Hebrew Ishmael, Ishmaelite. Not a Hebrew Israelite, a Hebrew Ishmaelite, man. So what did he spoke? What did he speak? He spoke Hebrew, man. And out of that language, out of the Hebrew language, came the Arab language to exist, man. You know? That's why we always confront you people and ask you, what does the, what does the word Allah mean? Because the word Allah comes from the Hebrew, man. You know, but we go into that later. So reading on, by this time the Hebrew Old Testament, uh, Hebrew Old Testament, which is the law, had been translated into Arabic, and the Arabs were rapturously pleased to read about their great ancestors and the story of the Hebrew uh, patriarchs. This fact alone helped Muhammad to inspire. It. So, hey, this guy. <laughs> This, uh, this fact alone helped Muhammad to inspire in the Arabs the feeling of nationalism and racial pride. So this guy was working in on their feelings, you know. He was really looking like, okay, okay. You know, he was basically deceiving them, man. Intruding them. To, to follow his, his religion, man. To gain more fame. You know? So, um... The feeling of nationalism and racial pride because they had read in the Hebrew scripture that Ishmael was to become a great nation. So this is where, where the whole religion is based off, man. But Abraham, for you called Ibrahim, kicked them out of the house, man, with the with the loaf of bread and some water, man. He didn't give a fuck about his son. Later on he didn't even call him his son, man. And I have another scripture to prove that, you know, in the Bible. It's basically the same scripture that I already read in the Old Testament. Also, it's all, it also been said in the New Testament, man. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered, I, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Again, man, in the New Testament, it's only got a son. Ishmael was, isn't, isn't, isn't relevant, man. That's what you, you people got to understand, you Muslims, man, and you fucking jakes who follow this crap, man. The scriptures say don't make mention of other gods, man. You know? You need to go back to what you really are, man. A Hebrew Israelite and a lot of you Jakes say that yeah I know that the Quran says the children of Israel are above everyone above all the nations of the earth well you are a Hebrew Israelite man so stop dealing with with that Islam and go back to the Bible man which is our history man that they took of us you are a Hebrew Israelite So before before this guy Muhammad set up this um, this Islam, those Arabs weren't into believing in one God, man. It was going off. Hey, they still go off, man. You know. So this is uh, Babylon to Tumbuk, uh, page forty-five. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshiping the sun, the stars, spirits, and idols. The Arabs possessed 360 idols, one for each day of the year. They had 360 idols, man. You know, they are 360 idols. So, like I just read, Muhammad was was playing in on emotions, man, of those Arabs to get more followers, man. And this man was a fucking snake, man. You know, he was working in on those feelings of those of those Arabs because those Arabs weren't weren't into 
into what or what is Islam, man. But as soon as he pulled in, pulled some strings, they was following him, and they was like, "Oh, okay, this is kind of interesting," you know. So that's the way he was working, man. And that all those things he learned from his wife, man, Khadija, which was a Hebrew Israelite, you know, she had brains, man. This guy didn't have brains. He couldn't read nor write, man. So with this, the mixing of beliefs, with mixing of beliefs and 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 uh, idol worship, this this Islam came to existence, man. Um, Babylon to Timbuktu, chapter four, uh, page four, the nine, uh, starting at Muhammad tribe. So it says, Muhammad tried to construct his religion as closely as he could after the Jewish religion. So he was, he was really looking at, at, at the Israelites. He was really observing them to build his religion as closely as theirs, man, which isn't a religion, which is nationality, man. Hebrew, to be a Hebrew Israelite, you gotta be by blood, man. You gotta be Hebrew Israelite by blood. You can't convert unto Hebrew Israelite, Israelite man. No, man, that's that's impossible. Your line gotta go back to uh, the twelve tribes of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and so on, and go back to the to the to uh, Jacob, man, whose name was changed into Israel. So Muhammad tried to construct his religion as closely as he could after the Jews. He favored the Jews by accepting many of their laws and traditions. When the Jews refused to convert, to be converted, he commanded his followers to stop turning uh, to the holy city of Jerusalem in prayer. <laughs> so, hey, you, you Arabs were first was praying to Israel, man. You first was praying, you was first praying to Jerusalem, man. But as soon as these Judites, man, you know the, the uh, nowadays the American Negroes, it was like, hey, well, what's what's up with this guy, man? He's not dealing with your with your stupid religion, man, that you just, you know, grab out of your nose and mix everything up, man. We're not dealing with you. You know, so she they they, they basically bucked him off, man. You know? They basically mocked him. So then he was he was touched, man. He was an emotional. He became an emotional Arab, man. So he told his followers to stop praying to Jerusalem, but rather turn to the city of Mecca. Why to the city of Mecca, man? Because they was already worshiping idols in Mecca, man. They was already worshiping idols there. That's where their uh, three hundred and sixty gods came from, man. 360 idols So let me read it again man. He commanded no, no He favored the Jews. So hey, this is hard man. He favored the Jews by accepting many of their laws and traditions When the Jews refused to be converted he commanded his followers to stop turning to the holy city of Jerusalem in prayer this guy got emotional man because the Judites Benjamin and Levites weren't dealing with this crap man you know so he was like hey okay we stop praying to jerusalem man now we're gonna pray to the city of mecca like 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 they even cared man you know but some israelites turned over to uh, islam that's true man and that's why uh this day you still see it man you still see jake in all into islam man, man. hey i got a scripture for that you still see it man This is um, Ecclesiastes 
chapter 1 verse 9 the thing that had been is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun so it, there's it's not a new thing under the sun that you you jays follow after islam man it's not no, it's not a new thing man that that which had been is that which shall be you 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 judaize converting to islam man e even on the islands man even in colombia i i know i know a jake from colombia man he went to learn uh, arabic he went to he went to uh, saudi arabia and and when he came there he was like hey they don't even like me man no because the, the, those arabs helped to put us into slavery man we don't have no right to be in their religion man it's their religion man it's their religion hey man i'm already putting the scripture ready man because to the spirit i have to go into this later man so um you know now they started praying to mecca okay he changed the jewish john kippur the day of atonement or fast day yeah man because we israelites we fast for a whole 24 hours if not more man the minimum is a whole 24 hours but you arabs you only fast for 12 hours man but that that whole fasting thing is based off of the scriptures man is based off our uh, uh, law statutes and commandments man so the day of atonement is the day that we fast for the most high and, and ask for forgiveness for all our things that we are sins that we've done man and beg him the whole day without eating without drinking to forgive us for that man <clears throat> so um, the day of atonement or fast day which he had accepted for the month of, of Ramadan you know he changed it into Ramadan <clears throat> um, Muhammad changed the Jewish Sabbath from Saturday to Friday we have another uh, parallel, parallel with Christianity in the fourth century the church changed the Sabbath to Sunday and this is all bogus man because we they changed the times man they changed the calendar Julius Caesar and, and, and uh, uh, Augustus Caesar they all have those both months both of those months June, July and August have 31 days man 31 days and if you look at the months it's all switched up man you know everything is switched up September is now the ninth month October is now the tenth month but if you look at the name set meaning seven it's now the ninth month octo meaning you know from the Latin ocho is is actually supposed to be the eighth month but now it is the tenth month you know so everything is switched up man you know November nueve nine uh, December yes no stand but everything is switched up man so you can't go off on these days that the Roman Catholic Church has set up man so also to you to you Muslims man you 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 worship on on Friday which Friday goes back to Freitas which is a is a Greek God man goddess hey this is all pagan paganism man the Sabbath is on the new moon. I also have a video about that. You can check it out, you know. So this is all paganism. Um, to Sunday and reorganize its calendar to make Easter separate of Passover. Like Christianity, also Muhammad includes in his Bible, the Quran. In his Bible, you know, the Quran accusations concerning the Jews. Nevertheless, the Quran glorifies many bib biblical personalities. Why? Because Muhammad was in inspired by the stories that, that the, the Judites told him, man. You know, he was inspired by that. So, you know, he glorifies ma ma uh, many biblical personalities in order to win the pagans into the church. <laughs> so he was again mixing things 
inside his religion to to pull uh, to get followers from the church, man, the pagan church, Christianity, uh, into the uh, to win the pagans into the church. Christianity adopted many uh, barbaric customs and traditions. Likewise, Muhammad to gain the loyalty of the pagan Arabs adopted many of their beloved customs. The Kaaba stone, an idol, was received high regard in the new religion. Also the pagan temple at Mecca was to remain as a holy site. Hey, that says enough, man. It says enough. The Kaaba stone was already worshipped, man. And that's what I say. As soon as Muhammad turned to, to, to pray to a, a, another city instead of Jerusalem, he had to go to Mecca, man. Why? Because Mecca was already a city of worship, man, for those uh, pagan Arabs with their 360 gods. And there they worshipped the, the, the highest god of those 360, and uh, that was the moon god Hubal. The moon god Hubal, he, he, they actually had a, had a statue, an idol, a, an idol statue upon that stone, man, upon that Kaaba stone. So that's why he turned back to that man. Okay, you know, to, to keep his followers, we go back to Mecca, man. And they was happy about it. Because they were already worshipping over there. You know, next to that um Hubal, you had um Al Lat that was a goddess. And that goddess was worshipped in the goddess was worshipped as the shape of a square stone. The shape of a square stone, man. This is a Mikal Uza. Uh, and the name means uh, the mighty. So those three was basically, you know, the highest of those 360 gods. Then later, uh, the moon god was referred to Al Ilat which later was shortened to be Allah, Al-Ilat, Allah. So it all goes back to that moon god, man, to that moon worship, man. You know, and to go, go further in that point that I was making about um, that the Arab language comes from the Hebrew language, the word Allah mean, just means power, man. The name of Israel, the name of Jacob turned into Israel. The word Israel in Hebrew is Yah, He, Shah, Prince, Allah, power, man. It just means power. So then, what what happens when you confront those 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 Arabs with? Okay, what what does Allah mean? Yeah, Allah has ninety nine names. Hey, that's not what I asked, man. What does it mean? It just means power, man. God means power. Allah means power. So then again, then again, I ask you, what is the name of your God? Not the title. Because Allah is a title, man. What is the name? And then you should ask me the name is Ubal, man. Ubal the moon God. Because it goes back to that. But Muhammad took away the statue of Ubal. To, because that was, uh, because that was, uh, was idolatry. And he wrote, wrote in his, in his, uh, in, in his, he didn't write it himself, but you know, he set up his religion to be not a worship of images because what he had that from the, from the, from the Judaism, man. He had that from the Israelites to not worship uh, images. So he took that away, and now the the the, the God, the power of that Kaaba stone is who? It's Allah, man. That's how everything is mixed into each other, man. So I, I, I'm speaking to you, Babers. I'm speaking to you, Jakes, who follow this Islam. Stop worshiping the moon, man, because they worship the moon, man. Look at the uh, look at the mosques. They they show you a moon. Look at all the flags that they have of the countries: Turkey, you know, uh, uh, Morocco, the star. They worship everything which in, which is in the heavens, man. And like I, like I just read in, in Babylon to Timbuktu, this all goes back to their, their foreign uh, re, uh, re, worshipping, man. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshipping the sun, the stars, spirits, and idols, man. 
all those Arab countries have a moon or a star, man. And that, that also goes back to witchcraft, man. It all goes back to witchcraft. I got another scripture, man. A lot of scriptures pop, pop up in my head now, man. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, this Islam, man, is a curse unto our people, man. And that curse already started when um, the Roman Catholic Church was set up, man, because it wasn't only for, for to fool you, to fool you Arabs, but it was also to fool uh, our people, man. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, if you don't follow the law, such commandment of Yahweh, these curses shall come upon us, man. And it happened, man. That's why we went into slavery. But also, this was a curse, man. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and, the, the, and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So in the land of our captivity we shall serve other gods, wood and stone, man. If you have a sick mind, like some of you jades have, you go over there to Mecca and pray to a stone, man. Something who has, who doesn't live. You can bet I'm not saying, but you can better, I'm not saying you should do it, but you can better pray to, to, a, to a tree, which is actually alive, than to a stone, man. A stone doesn't live, man. Some bullshit, man. Worship the creator, not the creation, man. You can't, you can't justify going to a stone and bowing down to a stone, man. You can't justify that, man. And that stone is a, me a meteorite. So that goes back to the sun, the moon, stars, you know, which they worship. Um, so yeah, man, and, and every hundred years, every hundred years, it's like every, uh, every year, more than hundred people died to go to that place, man, to Mecca, man. There was even a tunnel which collapsed. <laughs> which collapsed while people was walking through the tunnel to go to Mecca, man. It collapsed and then, hey man, hundreds of people died, man. So you think that's a religion, man? If, the, if, if your God was really true, if your God was really real, would he collapse a whole tunnel with people who want to go to the land of, you know, of worship, man? To worship a stone, you know? Would he really kill them all, man? Oh yeah, you probably say it's Satan, right? Or Jinn, or whatever, man. Some bullshit, man. For you Jakes out there, man. Jeremiah, chapter 51, starting at... Um, chapter 14, no, 12. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare um, 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 ambushes. For the Lord had both defied and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thy end is come, and the measure of thy co uh, covetousness. The Lord of hosts had sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men and with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He had made the earth by his power. He had established the world, the world by his wisdom, and had stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of the out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. 
for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. There is no breath in the stone, man. There is no breath in that copper stone, man, which, which you worship, man. They are vanity, the works of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish, man. When Yahweh Bashim Yahweh comes back, they shall perish, man. Those fake gods and idols, man. Verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. What's the portion of Jacob, man? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the scriptures, the Bible, man. That's the portion of Jacob. That's the thing which you should, which you have to deal with, man. Not the Islam, man. I just showed you, man. Pagan worship all over, man. Where is fucking witchcraft, man? Turn back to your to your uh, your real nationality, your real you know belief, man. Which is the law, statutes, commandments of the Bible in the name of Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, Yahweh the Father, Bahasham in the name of who? Yahweh Shai, man, the Son, which you people ignorantly call Jesus. Jesus, man, Jesus Christ. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts, Yahweh Bashem Yahusha is his name, man. Come on, man. You know? And the next video I'm gonna make is I'm gonna show you all the errors, all the, um, yeah, all the errors in the Quran, man. All the contradictions in the Quran. Because the Quran is completely off, man. So with that, I'm going to say all praise and glory to Yahweh Bar Hashem Yahushai, that for honest to the elders and apostles of GMS for teaching us the truth. Shalom to all you sincere, Akyam, you know, much love, who push this truth, man, to wake Jacob, man. Shalom.